Great. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, so, yeah, as you said, I'm going to talk about the new Firefox profiler today. And I'm Nazem Jan. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Mozilla, and I'm working on the performance tool in Team. And you can find me there. Uh, so, the Firefox profiler is essentially the profiler.firefox.com, so you can visit there. And there are some instructions, but I'm going to walk you through everything, so bear with me. Uh, so, this is a typical like screenshot from a Firefox profiler. And like what's happening here? Like there are a lot of stuff going on. Like there are a lot of colors, there are a lot of graphs. So uh, it's kind of intimidating at first uh, for people to use that tool. But uh, I'm gonna walk you through all the panels and every detail. So uh, you're gonna be more comfortable to use that tool once we're done. So, but essentially, we should take a look at back, and like we should uh, learn what is a profiler first. So, profiler essentially helps the developer to analyze the performance issues and uh, gives insight on, into how program works. So, it does that by sampling the prof program. So, what is sampling then? Uh, so. Pro Profiler stops the execution of the program in a like a fixed rate, for example, one millisecond. So, uh, and records the relevant data. For example, that can be a current stack. It records the data and resumes the profile program later. So, in this graph, uh, you can see a simple program, and the vert the vertical lines are the profiling profiler sampling. And uh, those straight lines are the program execution. And uh, main calls A, calls B, and calls C. Uh, so as you can see on the first peak, first C call, actually uh, profiler missed it. Because like the red uh, arrows are the stack of the current uh, program. And we managed to capture the main B, but at the, at the first peak, we actually managed to miss it because like the C runs less than one millisecond and uh, it just falls between two sampling time and uh, we didn't see it. But rest of it, like as you can see on the second peak, second C call, we actually managed to capture that uh, call. So it gets all the stack information in an interval time. And once we have that, we aggregate those data and we create something like this, a call tree. So this is an example from Firefox, actually. So there's a main function. And there, from the main, there are other calls. Uh, so we sample every millisecond and aggregate that data. And also, we create those timings from that, that aggregated data. Uh, I'm going to talk about the, sam the timing later. So yeah, as we learned, the samples provide a view into the profile program. But as you can see on the first C call, we can miss some stuff that happens quickly. So markers to the rescue. As an additional to the sample data, in the profiler, we also have marker data. And what are markers? So they are also very similar to samples. They, are, they provide a view into the executing code, but they don't miss anything because we manually add those information in the source code. And uh, we also include additional information. For example, in this picture, uh, there is the call stack the stack, and then there are some uh, additional information for styling. So this is a marker that we add whenever there's a new styling happens in a web page. So uh, we learned those two uh, main data sources from a profiler. But what is the Firefox profiler now then? So the motto of the Firefox profiler is capture performance profile analyze it, share it, and make the web faster. So this is, again, the same one. But there are two main advantages of Firefox Profiler. And the first one is 
you can see both JavaScript and the native call stack in a single call tree. What that means is, so when you run a JavaScript function in your web page, and if that function, uh, for example, adds a DOM element, and we need to see the DOM addition in the Firefox source code. So uh, we also, after that JavaScript uh, frame, we also see some Firefox-related native code execution. So you can also see that, those informations as well. Uh, also, you can filter to just JavaScript only. So if you are uh, profiling your web page, you can just see JavaScript. That, that's what is important to you. And the second part has two branches. Uh, the first one is for actually non-technical people. Uh, so if you're a non-technical person, you can just capture a profile. For example, Firefox has a performance issue, and you, you, have, you can reproduce that, but uh, you don't know what to do. So what you can do is capture a profile and then share it with an expert. In this case, you can create a bug in Bugzilla, and you can sh share the URL of that specific profile data, and some expert can come and see that profile later. Also, if you're a technical person, uh, you can capture it yourself. Uh, it can be, a, again, a web page or Firefox. And you can save it into your desktop, or you can share it and keep the URL, and then take a look at your data later. So uh, we'll now learn that there are actually two main UIs in this. First, you need to be able to capture a profile and then you need to be able to analyze it. So we're going to see the first capturing UI and uh, how to capture a good profile data. So first, you need to go into the profiler.firefox.com, and you just need to follow the instructions. It's pretty straightforward. There is a big button that says install add-on. So you need to install the add-on first. And once you install that, uh, you're going to see this pop-up. So this, a, an icon will appear on the top right side of, of your Firefox. And once you click that, this pop-up appears. And there are two big like, main buttons here. So once, the first one is uh, to, for you to re, uh, start recording or stop recording. And the second button is to capture that profile. So a, work, a typical workflow is this. First, you need to uh, make sure that you don't have any background task or tabs in your Firefox. So you need to isolate that performance problem as much as possible. And once you do that, uh, you need to start the profiler. And after that, you can do the work that, that you think uh, there is a performance issue. For example, you can, if there is a uh, performance issue during the page reload, you can start the profiler, and then reload it, wait until it, it's done, and then capture the profiler. Once you do that, uh, a new tab will pop up, and uh, it's going to bring you the profile at firefox.com again. And now you're going to see the data there, and you're going to see the analysis data, analysis UI that we've seen before. OK, so now we captured the profile data, and now we can actually uh, analyze it and try to analyze it. So this is the UI. I know it's complicated at first, but uh, this section is the timeline. So as you can see on the top side here, there are some uh, timing information. And here, at first row, there is a screenshot uh, track. So it also records screenshots of your Firefox. So you can actually see uh, the UI and the code at the same time and try to see what is happening here. And you can also hover over those and try to uh, see the bigger uh, screenshots. And in this section, in this process, uh, this is the stack graph. So we were capturing the stack uh, during the sampling, 
now we have that data and we aggregate that and uh, we show a danced view here. So it's not great accessibility wise because there are a lot of colors. We're trying to make it better. But uh, the important color, for example, here is the yellow one because that means JavaScript category. So you can also see other ones, for example, DOM as blue and et cetera. Uh, and here you can see uh, the markers that we mentioned before. They're more precise. There are a lot of them. So we, again, put it into a dense view. And uh, you can hover over those and see the de details of those markers. For example, this is a styling marker. And you can see some relevant information uh, about that marker. And you can see that took 17 milliseconds, which is quite long, usually. And you can also actually select a range during that timeline, and then you can uh, click into that magnifier icon in the center, and you can actually make it make that view the full view. And then you can zoom into that and as long as you want to uh, see what's happening there. And the other thing is we have the panels. So at the top of the pr profiler, we have the danced view that we put everything. But on the bottom side, there are more information for you to see. Uh, this is more detailed. So I'm not going to go into each tab right now, because we're going to see uh, those into the demo slide. So uh, that, that's easier that way. Uh, but also, uh, so now we are familiar with the UI. But if you're a non-technical person, you don't have to care about that. You, can, you, you should just know how to share that profile. So uh, inside the profiler data, we have a lot of uh, different kind of data. The first two ones are that we mentioned. Those are the main ones, samples and markers. And we have screenshots, network requests, metadata, et cetera. So keep in mind those. And so. Once you get the UI, actually there is a button on the top right corner named Publish. So you can click into that and this pop-up will uh, come up. And uh, here you can actually remove some of your personal data before uh, sharing it. Because as we can see on the previous slide, there are a lot of information. And those information can include some personal data as well. So here. For example, we can uh, remove the screenshots. That can be uh, personal information. Or we can remove the source resource URLs. Uh, so once you remove those, you can click Publish, and uh, it's going to just bring you the URL after uh, that upload session is done. And now you have the URL. You can just copy that and send it to someone else, or you can post this into the Bugzilla comment, and some other people can uh, take a look at that information later. And also, we have a uh, single tab and advanced view. So uh, this profile UI is complicated, and there are a lot of Firefox-related information in it as well. But if you're a web developer, you don't have to, ta you don't have to know those. And you can just uh, see your web content track, and you can try to analyze it. And so we, this is still a work in progress. Uh, so we are trying to make it the profiler better for web developers, so you can easily start using it. But uh, it's, it will happen very soon. So you can actually just see the information that you want to see. So let's go back to the demo section now. And uh, now we can uh, see those panels, and we can see what is happening there. Uh, as you can see, when once you open up that uh, profile. So by the way, you can get those slides here in that URL, and uh, you can get that demo uh, profile 
So you can take a look at that. Uh, so here you can click on that, and once you have that, you can uh, see it. So here, uh, this is an example profile that we captured before. But before that, I want to actually uh, show how we capture it. So we've seen the UI before, but still I want to show you how to do that. So the, here, not here, here, we have uh, the add-on. So you can press start, and now we are capturing the information of Firefox and that web page. And now you can do some stuff. For example, we are doing the tab switch now to uh, analyze the performance issue of that tab switch. And now we, we are done with it, and we can click capture. But I would recommend you to use the uh, shortcuts instead, because uh, once you open this pop-up, it actually affects the performance of Firefox. Like you can, it, it creates a new view and paints it. So to, you can minimize the usage of that pop-up and then just use the shortcuts instead. So that's much better. So once you've done that, it captures it. So this is the capturing part. And let's go back to our profile. So we have the screenshots here. So you can actually uh, hover over those and see the uh, bigger version of those. And uh, for example, this is a profile that we captured uh, during the Wikipedia. And we tried to open the DevTools panel and then close it afterwards. So this part is the one that we opened the panel, as you can see here. So we are opening this uh, DevTools panel here. And this uh, big stack is the DevTools initialization. So here, we start to initialize that DevTools, as you can see, and here it's done. At the end of that stack, we initialized it. And afterwards, here we are closing back again. And this stack corresponds to the closing part. So you can see uh, what uh, functions that we are calling during the initialization, during the uh, DevTools opening, and during the closing. And for example, here a uh, garbage collection happens once we are done with that data. Uh, so, and uh, those are the markers that you can just hover over those and see more information about them. And uh, usually red bar means that you need to fix something. There's something interesting going on there because there's a delay happening there. So you need to minimize the event processing delays, essentially. And here, we are doing a lot of work. So we can just zoom into that view as well to see what's happening. And uh, also, we can click into a marker to automatically select that range. And we can zoom into that wheel. So once you're in there, you can go back here to the full range. Um, so let's take a look at that section, because there are a lot of information there. And there are some interesting things going on. So we zoomed in here. And we are going to see the bottom of the page, the tabs. So the, this part is the part that we need to analyze. And we need to see what is happening. So you can click each, or you can option click and you can expand everything. And you can try to analyze this data. So for example, here there's a start, there's a main function of Firefox, and there's other functions happening. But if you're not a Firefox developer, you don't need to know those. You can just switch here to JavaScript. And you can only see the frames that you actually can change. And here, uh, you can, again, expand those and try to see. For example, on the left side, there's a running time. And this callback, this promise callback, takes the 49% of the time. And it is 295 milliseconds. So it's very high. 
and we can see the self time here. So the running time is the whole time including the nested function calls and the self time means the time actually that function itself takes. So we can try to see, for example, there's a uh, 10 millisecond self time, self time happening here. So that's a red flag. So we can try to see what that load function actually does and maybe we can try to make it more performant. Or let's see other things. Uh, so there's a seven millisecond, again, the load function, interesting. So um, that means that that load function does a lot of work. I don't know if it actually has to do it or maybe you can do some tweaks and make it more performant. Uh, here, another load function. So we start to see a pattern here. So there are a lot of uh, individual load function calls happening. Maybe we can just merge them together, try to uh, call everything at once instead of just doing everything. Uh, or, yeah, we, we can just try to see how we can reduce that time. And this is the call tree, basically. So this is the that. And the second tab is a bit more visual. So this is the flame graph. And this is essentially the same data with the call tree, but uh, you, you now have a bottom-up uh, call uh, stack here. So you see the longest running functions here. For example, this is the promise call stack that we've seen before. And once you go up, you see the other functions. And uh, you can hover over those again and see uh, more details about those functions. And for example, you can see how long overall takes or how long JavaScript interpreter actually takes that time. And you can, again, change the stacks. You can change the JavaScript only or native only. So native only means that uh, basically C++, Rust, or if you're on an Android, it can be uh, Kotlin or Java. So it depends. And this is the JavaScript. And if you change it back to all, all stacks, it will show you everything here. Uh, so the stack chart is also pretty similar with the first one, but the difference with the flame graph is the first thing, this is the top down. And the most important difference is this x axis is actually the time. So if you go back to the full range, you actually see those frames here. And you see those frames here. So you can see the timing information and uh, what frame is being called in what time. So, And you can go back to marker chart. So this is the same data with the, those markers, but it's more detailed and grouped. For example, you can see the DOM group, there's the garbage collection, graphics, JavaScript, etc. And uh, you can see more information if you hover over those. And uh, marker table is the same data, but with a table. Uh, also, by the way, you can filter whatever you want. For example, if you want to see the load uh, events, you can write load events, and you'll see load DOM events. For example, uh, this is the before load, before unload and load and stuff. And you can see this network load function markers. So, and you can do that filtering pretty much everywhere. Uh, you can do that here as well. You can see uh, only load functions. And the last tab is the network tab. So that uh, helps you to see what network requests are being made in this profile session. And you can, again, ho hover over those, and you can see how long does it take. And uh, you can see a more detailed view into that HTTP request. Uh, yeah, I think we are pretty much out of time.
Uh, like we have yeah. two seconds, yeah. two minutes, I guess. So uh, I'm gonna uh, close up the uh, demo and uh, one second. So you can learn more information in this documentation. You can go in there and try to see. You can also get those slides and uh, you can take a look at those again. And if you have any question, please uh, just join into our Matrix channel. It is Profiler. And just ask us anything. We are happy to help you. Uh, you can just ask us. So thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, and if you have any questions, please ask. Yeah, uh, we can have like one or two questions till I ask the next speaker to come and set up. Uh, yeah, I'm coming.